We are not broken. We are born of infinite intelligence. We are born of creative spirit. We are born innate, innately as artists, as, as, as great wonders of the universe. Uh, you can get nutrient dense food 24, uh, uh, excuse me, 12 months out of the year. Um, no matter where you live in, you know, doesn't matter if you're in a cold climate or not, you can grow this stuff indoors and get massively nutrient dense food. This is an invitation to a great event that is going to happen next year, that is 2021, January 30th and 31st. This is Spiritual Science International Meet. City and I'm reflecting back on Goenya. A wonderful time to see people so involved spiritually. So I bless you all. India's Sushil Kumar. Sushil Kumar, the 29 year old gold medal match. Greetings, friends. I warmly invite you to the Spiritual Science International Meet conducted by PSSM Global. It's an online event. I want to invite you to bring all your friends and family for a complete spiritual transformation. As many of you know, when I began my meditation journey in the early 1970s. Bad stuff. And when that gets into your body, that has effects on your health. You can use your judgment to choose the truth for yourself. And that's also known as the discernment. Like you should use your own discern, discernment and judge for yourself on what belief system works for you. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello and welcome. Nice to see you, Pari. My name is Mark Caron with Conscious Living Network and a whole bunch of other things I do. And today I'm here with my good friend and uh, I believe you're one of the founders of PSSM Global. Is that correct, Pari? Yep. Yes. And I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited to be part of uh, what's coming up at the end of January The with the, um, with the meet that you have coming up. You've got a great... Uh, lineup of speakers for the Spiritual Science International Meet <clears throat> coming up January 30th and 31st. And today I'm, you know, really honored and excited to have been invited to be part of your interview with uh, Ken Rolla, who is a natural health educator, researcher, and inventor from uh, Smyrna Beach, Florida, where he offers cutting edge products and services for regaining and optimizing uh, health naturally using ancient wisdom and cutting edge science and he's we're going to be talking today about you know p the the power of the pyramids for energy for healing uh, we're going to be talking about kind of what's going on in, in the field of energy work and I'm just really excited to be part of the team here to introduce Ken to the community welcome Ken Oh, thank you so much, Mark. It's my great pleasure, as always, to be with you all. Excellent. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to, to our conversation in the next hour. And uh, maybe what we can do is start by, you know, maybe telling people your story, who you are, and, and kind of what led you to this path to the work that you're doing in energy and health and pyramids and all the. Cause you're into a lot of great stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long and winding road. Um, you know, growing up, I was always a, kind of a problem child and a class clown and that kind of stuff because I, I don't know, I saw through a lot of the stuff people were telling me and I really wanted to believe what I was being told. But, it, you know, when I would investigate and talk to people, particularly authority figures, I just kept seeing over and over again that a lot of times they're just kind of making stuff up and they didn't really understand I think the nature of reality and a lot of things that they were, you know, talking about as authorities. 
And so, you know, from a very early age, I was kind of rebellious. And then uh, when I got to school in college, well, in high school as well, I was always very interested in science and, and just understanding the nature of everything. And so I was a very avid fan of quantum physics in, in uh, high school and then in college as well. And I, you know, had a lot of ideas about the nature of things and I would bring them to the attention of some of my professors, like physics professors and such, and chemistry and, and biology professors, and, and uh, talk to them about it. And, um, you know, there were ideas for phenomena that were unexplained in science or just ideas that I had. And most of the time, these people would just brush me off and say, why are you worried about that? You should be worried about getting an A on your test. You know, this is basically shut up, kid, and go do your work. And so uh, it wasn't until probably when I was in college, I met uh, Linus Pauling, a multiple Nobel Prize winner. And, and, um, and I showed him, I had developed a, a mathematical model for how time and space work. And, uh, you know, I presented it to my professors in school and they all just poo pooed it. And when I presented it to Linus Pauling, he said, wow, this is really uh, something you should explore this and pursue this, you know. And so when I, I realized that, um, you know, the reason that these people were rejecting this, I think, was because they just had mediocre minds. They just weren't really interested in, in, in really understanding the nature of things. They were just interested in having a job and having a paycheck and that kind of stuff. So, so you know, my whole life I've just been kind of rebellious, had a different viewpoint. And then in the 90s, uh, and I also had a lot of, like, I guess you'd say paranormal experiences throughout my life. And then in, in the 90s, I wound up working with free energy technology. Um, I met uh, a man who developed water field technology named Ewell Brown. And working with him, he was attracting a lot of inventors and scientists that had really advanced technologies, free energy technology, technology that could neutralize radioactivity, all kinds of stuff. And so it, it basically... Um, really showed me that my education, what I'd learned in engineering school, in electrical engineering, was fundamentally wrong. And so when I started learning real physics and uh, how things really worked, then it allowed me to develop my own advanced technologies for doing things like uh, improving sleep or EMF protection or stopping hurricanes, balancing weather, uh, all kinds of stuff. And so the you know the deeper I got into that kind of stuff, the more that I would attract people in the know who are working with advanced technologies like time travel technology, um, interstellar space travel, interstellar communication technologies, all kinds of stuff, and I wound up meeting people in the secret sp in secret space programs and um, and in the military working on you know very top secret activities like that. And I also encountered extraterrestrials uh, in the physical, and so I've, and they told me a lot of things. So I had this really weird esoteric background, and, and also had a lot of unusual experiences, like working and living with Martin Luther King's family and helping Coretta Scott King to heal herself. And so I've just had access to a lot of information that most people aren't privy to, and when you become public, uh, you know, a public speaker and talk about this stuff, you kind of become a nexus point for people to, who are in the know to share with you. And also <laughs> for people and organizations to attack you or to, you know, so I've had government agencies and, and military types, uh, you know, spy on me. And even now I've got, you know, people that, that uh, watch me and stuff like that. But uh, but nonetheless, you know, I've been able to put these um, this knowledge and information out about healing. Uh, I got into natural health, oh, maybe 30 years ago when I needed to heal myself. And I learned from some of the uh, top people in the world, including Dr. Gabriel Cousins, who I know you all are going to be interviewing on the 30th and 31st with the uh, PSSM. And so... Uh, so yeah, I've just bumped into a lot of amazing people like that, learn from them, and because of my background in engineering and having all this esoteric science background, I saw things that other people weren't seeing, and I figured things out that other people weren't figuring out. And so that's what I do now. I share that information and knowledge, and teach people how to maintain their health, how to, you know, even with um, geoengineering, even with 5G wireless technology, even with COVID. Um, you know, I've 
I was hit maybe 15 years ago with bioweapons as, you know, in retaliation for some of the work I was doing developing technologies. I've also been hit by energy weapons. And so I had to learn how to protect myself and heal myself from that many years ago. And I've been teaching about it ever since. And so when COVID came along, which is a bioweapon, and we can talk about that, uh, I already had solutions for it. And so I just, you know, started sharing with people all of those methods for protecting themselves or healing themselves if they needed to from COVID or any other GMO bioweapon. Wow. There, there's, there's a lot there to work with, Ken. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot to unpack, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Pari, do you have any questions to start? Well, I'm just excited about today's topic um, and uh, hearing from Ken because I've been getting a lot of since COVID started. Ken has been sending me all his uh, suggestions about what to do and, and I've been following that very strictly because anything that comes from Ken, I'm very like, I, I make sure that I follow that because I know that he has all these um, intel and, you know, credible sources that he has. Um, so I'm so excited about today and I can uh, hear all about what really bioweapons are because most of our audience who are here today, they really don't know what that means. So uh, just about, you know, the background about what that really means. Okay. Well, <clears throat> bioweapons have been around for thousands of years. You know, humankind has tried to use, for example, bacteria uh, for warfare even, you know, a couple thousand years ago, with, usually with disastrous results because it's kind of just like COVID. You go releasing any kind of a, a germ or a virus, um, chances are you're going to get infected with it as well. And so, um, but it's been around for a long, long time. And in, you know, the modern era since World War I, it's been um, developed uh, in laboratories and, you know, gotten much more technologically savvy, particularly in recent years with uh, genetics and genetic modification. Now, you know, militaries can make, uh, and others can make genetically modified bacteria and viruses and other types of pathogens that are extremely virulent and deadly and resistant to uh, temperature and, and environmental conditions. Typically, natural bacteria or viruses, <clears throat> I, now I was told this by a, a bioweapons expert in the military, in the U.S. military, that <clears throat> they typically can only last about 24 hours at best out in the uh, environment, especially outdoors. But these genetically modified strains can last for weeks, um, you know, just sitting out on a surface uh, being exposed to the environment. So, so there are multiple reasons for creating these bioweapons, but what they are typically is these days, they can be bacteria or viruses um, usually. And with COVID, for example, it's a virus. The nature of what viruses are is still debated among scientists. And my impression is from deep diving in research on virology that, that most scientists, even you know, Nobel Prize winners, really don't understand the nature of viruses. You know, they discuss and argue about it quite a bit, whether viruses are even life forms. There's debate about that. But my impression is that these viruses are kind of a, maybe a, I don't know if pseudo life form is a proper term, but a very, very, I would say a very, very fundamental type of life form. There was a man named Wilhelm Reich back in the early 1900s who was studying, um, he was actually a psychi psychiatrist who was one of uh, uh, Sigmund Freud's contemporaries and colleagues. And he was, they were both studying human sexuality and, and sexual aberrations. And Reich was studying the energetic aspects of it. And he discovered that there was this, this bio energy or this life force in human beings uh, that was involved not just in sexuality, but everything in human beings. And he termed it orgone because he was studying orgasms. So he based it on that and called it orgone. Um, he didn't have the scientific background or vocabulary that we have now. And so he kind of made up his own terminology and descriptions of this stuff. But one of the things that he discovered when he was studying this energy is that uh, he could take vacuum sealed containers with, with sand that had been sterilized, you know, for several thousand degrees, put it inside of a vacuum sealed sterilized container, and then uh, life would spontaneously occur inside of it. There were these little blue flashes that would occur. And, and there would be these little pseudo life forms 
that uh, would form. And so Reich called them bions. And I think that viruses are similar to that uh, in that I, I think that there's some fundamental form of, of life that kind of crosses the barriers between uh, a living organism and maybe, uh, you know, maybe uh, an executable program, so to speak. It's like a biological program. And so there's a lot of confusion over it. And, and there are some people that even, even, you know, renowned virologists that will say that, you know, viruses have never been physically isolated. Um, they have been shown under electron microscopes, but their nature is very misunderstood. Uh, from my contact in the military, a friend of mine who was in a nuclear, biological, and chemical unit, um, and he, it was his job to infect troops with bacteria and viral um, bioweapons and see how lethal they were and how virulent they were and how they would spread and that kind of stuff. And uh, he said, you know, whether you believe in viruses exist or not, he said, without question, they can be transmissible. There's a lot of debate about whether a virus can be transmissible uh, because we really, we all have viruses and bacteria within our bodies. Actually, there are more uh, microbes in our bodies than there are human cells. And so we walk around with this environment inside of our bodies full of these different microbes. And depending on the environment in our bodies, um, whether the body is you know, operating the way it should or if it's out of balance from diet and stress and, and toxins and such, EMF and other things, um, that will dictate if the, whether the environment is um, conducive to pathogens uh, growing in the body or beneficial microbes in the body. And it's also been discovered that these microbes, bacteria, and viruses are what are called pleomorphs, where they can actually morph from one form to another. They can morph from one species to another. And unbelievably, they can even morph from a virus to a bacteria, um, which is just, that's like a dog turning it into a mouse or, or vice versa. It's just on, it's a completely different scale. It should be impossible, and yet it happens. And it's because we don't understand the fundamental nature of matter and energy itself. Um, and so this seems, you know, to be completely un Im impossible, except that Nobel Prize winners and renowned scientists are making these discoveries. And, you know, when they do, they get uh, dismissed and called quacks and things like that. But at any rate, um, bioweapons typically these days are they will genetically modify through gene splicing either bacteria or viruses and make them much more virulent, make them sometimes target specific types of people, specific races, particular um, certain genetic strains or types of people so they can target certain segments of society. Um, or you could target, for example, a certain race of people in a certain country. Um, so um, they're Bioweapons are not very effective as a weapon per se. They're not really good at killing people off, although they can do that. But they really aren't that good because the human body is amazing and it has a great capacity to heal. But what bioweapons are very effective at is creating uh, panic and just um, destroying economies, creating fear and um, and disrupting societies. And so. There are weapons like that that are used against countries, uh, for example, like weather warfare. You know, it, it's it's not that it can kill people; it's that it can be used to coerce countries into political or economic or whatever kind of policies uh, that the country that's attacking wants to dictate. And so, these weapons have been used for decades uh, around the world, and I've been speaking about it for about 15 years now and solutions for it. But it's only now coming to the forefront of you know, everyone's awareness because of COVID. And of course, you know, most people are not aware that COVID is a bioweapon because the moment that labs come out with that analysis showing that, uh, they get uh, discredited and attacked and usually they get death threats. The people that did the research get death threats and they get shut up. But there have been, you know, multiple labs around the world that have confirmed that COVID, for example, is a bioweapon. Uh, there was actually a, an Indian, a group of Indian researchers, about a dozen researchers at several different universities in India that when COVID came out, they immediately uh, got a sample and studied it and found out that it was genetically modified and it has uh, HIV components in it. Uh, then Dr. Luc Montagnier, who was the Nobel Prize winning virologist that discovered the HIV virus, 
he has an independent lab that's well funded, uh, that's self funded, so he's not beholden to outside interest. And he also confirmed that COVID is a genetically modified bioweapon with HIV components. And then there's been a bunch of different whistleblowers. Um, uh, Dr. Judy Mikovits, who worked with uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci very closely, she came out uh, exposing Fauci and, and you know that he was a fraud. And that also he had profited ham handsomely from the AIDS epidemic, which wasn't really an epidemic, but it was just like COVID. It was a, a false pandemic or epidemic that uh, made billions of dollars for the drug companies. And Fauci had the patents on some of them, so he made millions of dollars off of that. And he's doing the same thing with uh, COVID. He's got patents on COVID vaccines, the Moderna COVID vaccine, for example, he's got patents on it. So he stands to make millions and millions of dollars and the drug companies stand to make billions of dollars. While the medical system itself already knows that there are multiple pharmaceutical cures for COVID and there are natural cures for COVID, which is one of the things I've been presenting. I actually did a, a six hour webinar on COVID and solutions for it and bioweapons in general and 5G and geoengineering pollutants because they're all related, they're all connected. And showing the evidence of this because I know it sounds like I'm just a conspiracy theorist reading stuff off the internet, but um, there's a lot of hard uh, evidence showing that this is what's going on. Uh, so along with Judy Mikovits, uh, there was also um, a, there were two uh, Chinese virologists, some of the top virologists in China, uh, uh, one defected to Germany and kind of disappeared. The other one, um, Dr. Yan Li Meng, uh, she came out, she's been all over the American press and been very public. Uh, about she worked in the Wuhan lab. She's from Hong Kong, but she worked in the Wuhan lab and she flat out said that COVID is a bioweapon that China engineered to destroy the US and other economies so that China could become the world's superpower. And so, um, and there's, you know, many others. There's a pathologist, president of the Bulgarian Pathology Association exposed it. There's been many, many European doctors and, and doctors around the world exposing that this so-called pandemic is a total fraud. Uh, the purpose it appears to be to further enslave humanity, to get people used to fewer and fewer freedoms, to staying at home, to killing off small businesses, to promote big global corporations and um, kind of force humanity into, you know, buying the goods and services from the big global corporations eliminating access to natural health, natural medicine, or organic food, those kinds of things. Because if you destroy small businesses and farms and stuff, then, then you can um, sell these genetically modified crops. You can have big global companies like Cargill and Nestle and others being the uh, suppliers of food to the masses without access to organic and natural food. So there's a big agenda here. It's been in the works for many, many years. I showed the evidence of that uh, in my webinar, but you know, people need to understand that this is by design. It's been planned for many years in advance. And uh, I think it's gonna be getting exposed this year uh, because there's so many whistleblowers coming out. And also the military has a lot of evidence that they haven't released about this stuff. Um, so, uh, so that's kind of what's going on with COVID. And then, you know, the question is, what do we do about it? And also, you know, it's, as I mentioned, it's linked to 5G wireless and geoengineering pollutants as well. Um, part of it is for population reduction. Um, you know, because when I was a kid growing up in the sixties in elementary school, we were, we were taught a lot about population, overpopulation, you know, and they discuss what are we going to do about it and those kinds of things. And then, you know, somewhere along the late seventies and eighties that just kind of disappeared. Nobody talks about overpopulation anymore as if it's not an issue, you know, they'll talk about climate change and this and that, the other, but they don't talk about overpopulation. And uh, it's not because the issue has gone away. It's because there's a plan that's been put in place and even the world health organization, and the United Nations has discussed it for decades uh, about the, uh, you know, that population will take care of itself because people will just die off from starvation and disease and such. And the truth is the starvation and disease are being engineered uh, as part of a plan. So 
people need to understand that there's an active plan to reduce population and get rid of you and enslave the ones who are left so that you know people do not travel as much people do not have the freedoms that they've had and basically power can be dictated from the top down uh, in a more socialistic environment rather than uh, in a free market economy where you know small business can thrive and people can make choices and those kinds of things. It's really about consolidating power in the hands of a small group of financial elite on this planet. Uh, it's really what it's about. And I know that sounds conspiratorial uh, to a lot of people. Um, and if you you know if you if you think it's a conspiracy, I I encourage people to go to my private membership site, freshandaliveclub.com. You can sign up for $5 one-time fee, and you can watch uh, my six-hour webinar on code and stuff where I show, for six hours, I show the evidence of this. I'm not just, you know, some wingnut making this stuff up. Uh, that's, well, again, there, <coughs> excuse me, a lot to unpack there, Ken. And I know <clears throat> for some people watching, um, you know, this may be the first time they've heard anything like this. Uh, for some people watching it, they, they may have heard things and just discredited, as you said, as some lunatical conspiracy theorist. Yet there's so many people coming out with credible um, stories, evidence, experiences of, of what you speak. Now, my. A couple of questions I have specifically is when we talk about bio and energy weapons, we all know about COVID in the sense of, you know, we know we're going to get it if we got it kind of a thing because we get tested and we're not feeling well, there's symptoms. But how would we know if we're actually being targeted by these energy or, you know, biotechnic weapons of that nature? Well, uh, you have to use technology that can identify it. And, you know, I used to work in medical pathology labs doing testing on people and specimens. And so I, I understand, you know, medical testing and what its limits are. And there are, along with, you know, energy weapons and bioweapons, there are also brilliant people in those realms that develop solutions as well. And so there are technologies known as quantum biofeedback devices or scalar energy devices mm -hmm. that utilize a what some people might call a subtle energy uh, that scientists call scalar waves. The military calls them scalar waves or scalar energy. It's really what it is is superluminal light, and it's really what everything is made of. Um, when you look at, for example, an atom, uh, you know the old model of the atom that I was taught in school is known as the Bohr model of the atom, it, in, and it you know, makes out that atoms are like little solar systems where you've got a nucleus with an electron spinning around it and inside the nucleus there's, you know, neutron, proton, electron, and those are made up of smaller particles, quarks and muons and leptons and such, and gluons, and those are made up of smaller and smaller particles. That's not really how it works. Uh, it's been shown by really brilliant people, and some of them Nobel Prize winners, that the nature of matter, when you start getting down inside the nucleus of atoms, that what you have are geometric patterns of light and those kind of coagulate into matter and and so what that implies is that we're living in a holographic universe and so all of this very physical solid matter is really made of light and even though it is solid and it's real and all of that at its core it's all holographic and so that that light energy is what scientists call scalar waves or scalar energy it's just light that's traveling infinitely faster than the conventional speed of light and so it looks invisible to us or black to us uh, and our instruments and so when we try to measure it or see it particularly out in space it appears invisible or dark and so scientists will call it dark energy or dark matter or whatever it emanates from the centers of galaxies and it, it, when it's flowing, it spirals and it branches as it's traveling. So it's spiraling and branching as it goes. And normally with conventional energy, what are known as transverse waves, for example, like shining a flashlight, you turn a flashlight on and the light comes out. And as it goes away from the flashlight, the beam gets wider and weaker. Skater waves are the opposite. When they come out of its source, they're very strong and they, they're spiraling and they create vortexes that are like tornadoes that fold in on themselves. So at the source, they're spinning and vortexing in very large spirals. 
and they fold in on themselves just like a tornado and they get stronger as they go away from the source. So they're really weird. They have all these really weird properties. And ultimately, this, like I said, this energy comes out of the centers of galaxies because it's been discovered that at the center of galaxies, there are superluminal suns, which some scientists will call a black hole, but it's really a, a superluminal sun. And this energy emanates out. It branches and it spirals as it goes. And it's relayed through the cosmos through the suns and the planets because it's been discovered that at the centers of suns and planets there are black holes as well and they act like these interdimensional relays points for this energy to flow so the whole cosmos is this big matter energy system where this energy is flowing through everything kind of like the force in star wars and it slows down and it coagulates into matter and the electromagnetic spectrum of energy that we're familiar with and that we can see and measure and so this has significance with pyramids and meditation because human beings, all living organisms, are antennas that pick this energy up. We're actually, our bodies are fractal in nature. A, a fractal is just a branching. You know, a tree is a fractal. Human beings are a, a fractal. We, you know, our bodies are branching. Our nervous system, our blood system, our lymph system are all fractal. Our cell structures is fractal. Everything in the cosmos is structured fractally. And we're little antennas that capture this energy, this God consciousness, because it has intelligence. We capture it and we rebroadcast it in a localized field. <clears throat> and, and we do this individually and we do it collectively. And so, so at every scale of the cosmos, all of these different structures are capturing this God consciousness coming from the center of, of galaxies and rebroadcasting it locally and putting our little frequency on it, putting the Ken frequency and the Mark frequency and the, and the party frequency on it. And so we kind of individualize it and our own frequency to it. Um, and pyramids do the same thing. Pyramids capture this energy. They are antennas, they are skater wave antennas. And that's why they have all of the odd uh, qualities that they have and the healing qualities and other qualities. And so if we're sitting in them and meditating with them, we enhance each other. The pyramid enhances our ability to pick up this energy and rebroadcast it. And we enhance the pyramid's ability to do that. <clears throat> and so that's why, you know, when I met uh, Patriji and, uh, and I heard him talking about all of this stuff, I knew he understood this. You know, he may not understand all of the details of the physics. And in fact, he said very correctly, the science doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is sit down and meditate with the pyramid, right? <laughs> it's absolutely true. I talk about the science because particularly Americans and westernized people, they want to hear the logical scientific explanation so they can wrap their heads around it. But the truth is it doesn't matter. You know, the only thing that matters is knowing what we can do with it. And hence, you know, meditating with pyramids. Uh, pyramids can structure water. You know, water is a liquid crystal and the energy coming off of a pyramid uh, can structure water, it can heal people. It basically accelerates what our bodies are always doing. Um, our bodies are always bringing in this energy and recreating the matter within our bodies moment by moment. And that's how our cells regenerate and heal. And so if you open up the meridians in the body, you know, if you open up what in Ayurveda they call the nadis, in Chinese medicine they call them the acupuncture meridians, and in the brain neural pathways, the brain neural pathways are loaded up with these superconducting minerals that create the same kind of uh, little microscopic portals as the, the nadis. And then also the DNA is loaded up with minerals that do this. So, so basically all of this, these structures in our body are capturing this energy and recreating the matter moment by moment. And the better that that energy can flow through these structures, the better it can recreate that matter moment by moment and heal things and regenerate things. And so by eating the right diet and doing things like meditating with pyramids and being around pyramids, all of that will accelerate these natural processes within the body so that you can heal faster, you can open up your third eye and get more insight more quickly, sleep better, et cetera, et cetera. You know, uh, I work with Dr. Sam Osman Agic in the uh, Bosnian pyramids. Uh, they've discovered the largest so far pyramids in the world in Bosnia. There's been a lot of debate about uh, from you know mainstream science as to whether or not they're real pyramids. They absolutely are. There's no question. They found so many artifacts and stuff within them. They are. But interestingly enough, people are going inside the tunnels that they've excavated at these pyramids, and they're getting healed of major major illnesses. You know, like stage four lung cancer. There was a woman 
from Serbia who was told, you know, you got 30 days to live, go home and die. She had lung cancer. She went into the tunnels, meditated two hours a day. Two weeks later, guess what? No cancer. She goes back to her oncologist. They can't believe it. And that's happening over and over and over again in the Bosnian pyramids. We can do the same thing. We don't have to go to Bosnia. We can build pyramids on our homes and around where we live, and we can meditate with them. We can do uh, yoga. We can do Kriya yoga, all kinds of things, and heal ourselves and protect ourselves from EMF and on and on and on. Well, I, I got to say, I love how you anticipate all of my questions, like you're reading my mind, because as I have them, you, you just naturally flow right into what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, I've been talking about this a long time, and I've seen the questions, and I've had the same questions, you know? It's like, I, you know, I've always been curious, and I've always sought out people who knew the answers to these things, and many times it's ancient texts. You know, the ancient Egyptians knew about this. All, all the ancient people knew about this stuff. They wrote about it and talked about it. And I've had the fortune of meeting a lot of brilliant people that know about it. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I just, I've been talking about it a long time. Uh, so and I know for people that are new to this, I know it sounds totally crazy. Um, but the more that you explore this, if you just keep an open mind and explore this, I, in, in, my, in my teachings, uh, I, I do show the scientific evidence and as much evidence as I can about these concepts. But ultimately, again, the only thing that matters is actually what can we do with this? And so I also teach people what we can do with this in our homes, in our kitchens, in our gardens, you know, for agriculture, for healing, for all kinds of stuff. That's what really matters. So when you're talking about scalar energy, you must know Tom Palladino. Yes, he's here yes. in Florida. Yeah, he I don't is, know yeah. him personally, but I know his work. Yeah, I uh, he was one of the first interviews I did many a number of years ago, actually, and uh, he was presenting his his work on, on scalar energy, which was really quite powerful. And then when you bring that into the relation to the pyramids, it really really makes sense. And one of the things I wanted to kind of just throw out there for for people who might think that this does sound you know crazy or untrue or what have you, I always recommend <clears throat> you know doing it, experience it, see how it works for you. Because it's one thing for us to share our experiences, <clears throat> excuse me, or tell stories of other people's experiences. I, I think what's important is if you really want to talk about it from your perspective is to experience it. Do some pyramid meditation for 30 days. Do some work with scalar energy. Cleanse, detox your body, eat organic foods, eat close to the ground. Do all of those things before you speak of a knowing of that experience. And, and I know that was my experience just in, in changing my diet and a number of things that I did in my life over the course of, you know, really all my life, but mostly in the past 20 years or so is it's the experience, because experience is always the best teacher, right? I couldn't and, agree more, Mark. I couldn't agree more. You know, you could tell us, you could tell us what's true, yet if I find and lead it to myself and do my own research and things, because, you know, the things you're talking about, I, I'm i with you, but you can't tell anybody any different, and you can't show them your stuff as much as they need to go find it themselves. Exactly. Right. That's exactly right. You know, find your own truth with this stuff. Keep an open mind. Be teachable. And, you know, I tell people, you know, be skeptical. Fine. Don't believe what I say. Fine. Great. I encourage that. Just do it. See what happens. Well, and, and I think it, it's important as well, you know, as we come back to being in our own present moment, it's what can we do right here? Because, you know, where I am physically and geographically right now, I'm out in nature, surrounded by acres and acres of forest and, you know, just beauty, my world is very different than if I turn on the TV and let the news into my world or anything like that. How do we navigate this in a way so that we can be present, live a good life, and carry on with, you know, love, compassion, grace, joy, bliss, even in the midst of these great unknowns? Well, the first thing you've got to do is unplug from the media. Uh, this entire planet has been mind controlled for thousands of years in various ways, and it's gotten more and more sophisticated over the years. There are now technologies being used, frequency technologies, and this actually is part of the 5G grid as well as part of the plan 
uh, and again, I'm not speaking from reading conspiracy theories on the internet. I'm talking to people who are working with these technologies. But at any rate, what we have to do is disconnect from uh, the mind control on this planet. And that means, you know, unplugging your TV, meditating. That is like the most important thing. You know, don't listen to especially mainstream media, but don't listen to any media. You know, what you need in your life has nothing to do with what's on TV or YouTube or Netflix or whatever. What's important for you and what will be right for you is you can find that by meditation. You know, it's like it's like whatever's going on in politics right now. You know, are you going to be able to change that? I doubt it. You can change yourself. You can change your beliefs. You can change your reality. And even in, in the midst of chaos and mayhem or whatever, you can maintain peace, calm, happiness, abundance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, my wife is Chinese from Taiwan, and years ago we visited China, and we were touring all around, and there was massive poverty in places we were going to. And yet, it was in some of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. And I, and I told my wife, I said, you know, even though you know people didn't smile because they were so poor and miserable and, and that kind of stuff, I said, you know, I could live in a place like this and be completely happy and content. And, it, and it's because of a combination of having the perspective that I have and also, you know, coming from an outside environment, it would definitely be easier. But the point of it is, is that we all create our reality and we have to understand that it's not like some metaphysical conceit. We literally create our reality individually and collectively moment by moment by what we focus on and what we think and what we attract moment by moment. And so Patriji has talked about this a lot. And he is absolutely right. I, I was amazed when I met him at what he's been able to manifest in just a few decades. It's just, it's astounding. Thousands and thousands of pyramids all over India, giant pyramids that can seat 6,000 people for meditation. It's on and on and on. It's, it's astounding to me that one man has been able to do what he's been able to do in, in a lifetime. And it's because he understood, as Pari will tell you, and I've heard Pari say this many times, he always knew he would succeed. He never doubted it. And that's what we have to do. We have to let go of the fears. We have to understand our power, understand that we create our realities and that we can manifest what we want, even in the midst of turmoil or chaos or whatever. We can do that. And so the trick is staying out of fear, not plugging into all of this outside stuff, social media, et cetera, et cetera, and meditate. You meditate, you will get your answers because when you're meditating, you're not just, you know, when I didn't know anything about meditation, I was told about it. I thought meditation was just sitting down and getting quiet and calm and relaxing and de-stressing. I had no idea that what you're really doing is you're clearing your mind, you're developing the ability to focus. When you develop the ability to focus, then you can focus on what you want and then you can create it for one thing. But you can also connect up with guides, with source, whatever you want to call it. You can connect up with non-physical consciousness, non-physical reality, spirits, whatever you want to call it, God. You can connect up with that and you can get real practical information on a day-to-day -day basis on how to live your life and what to do so that for you, you will have exactly, you will know exactly what you need to do for your life and you don't need to rely on the news or anything else. You know, I, I mean, I've just seen that over and over and over again in my in my own life where there's like, you know, like right now in the United States, I mean, look at what's going on with their politics. It's like living inside uh, the eye of a hurricane. There's all this stuff flying around me and it's all flying apart and getting ripped to pieces. And I'm just fine. Things are great. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's because I meditate and I and I listen and I do what I feel is right. I trust my feelings. And I don't question it, and I do what comes to me, and guess what? It you know, <laughs> it works. So that's what we've got to do. We have to break the mind control programming, disconnect from all the you know TV and social media programming, phones and all that stuff, and go within, meditate, um, get our answers. And you can plug in every now and then. You can you know, but I would recommend to start out just take a month off and don't plug into the news, into social media, any of that stuff. Stay off your phone, 
at least as much as possible. Use your phone when you absolutely have to and see how it changes your life. And then once you do that, then you can dip in every now and then and you know check things out, whatever's going online or the news or whatever. But you'll find that, for example, I've got a friend who Pari knows, uh, Shrikanth, who hosted Patriji in Florida a couple years ago. And he just moved 10 minutes away from me, right? And I was telling him, I said, have you heard what's going on in the United States with uh, you know, the, these kind of hidden events? Because I've got contacts in the military intelligence agencies that are telling me things. They're like, no, I don't watch TV. I don't they say anything. I said, uh, I said, okay, well, just you know, make sure you're stocked up on food and water and, and you got your car gassed up, right? He's like, okay. <laughs> and that's all he needs, right? He doesn't have to plug into the news. And I've seen that with myself, you know, it's like I won't be plugged into that stuff and I'll get a phone call from a friend or somebody and they'll say, hey, you know, this and that's going on, you need to do this. Or, hey, a hurricane's coming. I'm like, oh, okay. Turns out I don't need to worry about hurricanes because I developed a, a, a technology that'll stop them. And so here in Florida, we actually don't have to worry about that too much. So, you know, it all goes back to you create your reality, staying out of fear and focusing on what you want. and. You will do amazing things. You will have amazing things, just like you know Patriji and any of these great teachers throughout history have shown. Um, people marvel at at how these people live, and they want to know how how did they get there. So ask Patriji, meditate, meditate, <laughs> meditate, right? Yes. And don't eat meat. And don't eat. Meat. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. right. <laughs> Passionately, That's right. we got to be more passionate than that. Don't eat that's right and, yeah. and it's very true that's a very valid point you know not eating animals and not eating garbage uh, you know not eating toxic food not eating processed food which good luck I mean even if you're eating whole live food you're still going to get toxin in it these days so we have to along with eating the right food and having the right knowledge and information reading books those kinds of things um, meditating you know, we have to detox our body from time to time and we have to detox our minds and our emotions from time to time. You know, we need to do emotional hearing and emotional cle cle clearing from time to time uh, so that we can, quote, raise our frequency. You know, everybody talks about, oh, raising your frequency, raise your frequency. Well, what does that mean? What it really means is clearing the body and the mind of impediments, uh, which is, you know, physical and emotional and mental toxins, negative thinking, catastrophic thinking. It's one of the things I love about your dad. Ever since I heard him say this, I've been, um, I've been going around telling people this. You know, don't use catastrophic thinking. Don't use negative thinking. Use miraculous thinking. You know, think in miracles. Like, well, I, I want to really acknowledge what you said there because I think it's super, super important. Because we get, you know, so many of us, especially in our Western culture, from the media and everything we've seen this pattern of negative talk and not just negative talk negative self-talk not oh, yeah. not not even verbally but mentally and you know yeah. can you really speak my language because I put one of my personal beliefs is that becomes a bad habit right or, you know like we learn to do that somewhere and we just kind of continue to run this loop of that thinking mm -hmm. and people have a hard time popping out of that right and all of these physical, emotional, and spiritual imbalances come from trauma. The root source of all imbalances is trauma. Whether it's physical or emotional, it starts with trauma. And so you have to recognize that and do trauma release as well. And so there are techniques for doing that. Um, many therapies, emotional healing therapies. Meditation is a great, great, great way to do it. Um, it just It's like it just goes away and you don't know why. You don't have to you know, do any therapies where you like dig up old traumas and rehash them. I mean, that is absolutely not the thing to do because then you're creating new traumas. The thing to do is just do certain therapies like meditation, like stimulating opposite sides of the body back and forth at certain frequencies. There are certain technologies that can do that. Pendulums, all kinds of things, pyramids, those, all those can release the cellular memory of trauma and the energetic memory of trauma in the body and in the mind. And when you release that, the fear goes away, and then you're able to manifest more. But also, physical illness always starts in the emotion. So by healing the emotions, you also heal the physical body. Mm -hmm. And this is why I've seen, I've seen people with baseball-sized brain tumors in four hours make the brain tumor disappear simply by working on the mind and the emotions and hearing, healing the mind and the emotions and bringing the conscious and unconscious mind into... Um, into alliance 
so that they both understand that it's possible. You know, if you don't believe something is possible, then it's not possible for you. So this is what we've got to do. And there's all these, you know, ancient techniques for doing this. Meditation, yoga, Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, you know, herb herbalism, on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. In just 45 <laughs> minutes, we had covered so much information. That is just amazing, amazing. And uh, can I, I cannot wait to hear more about bioweapons, more about these energy weapons and how can we protect ourselves. That's like, you know, the, the most important aspect of today's world at this, in this current times. And okay. yeah, and go ahead. Okay, so with bioweapons, what you need to do, and really for any kind of an infection, you know, any kind of bacterial, viral infection, parasites, um, you need to have a kit on hand of certain supplements that you can use to detox. Uh, one of the most powerful ones that I use is chlorine dioxide. Uh, some people know it as MMS or CDS, uh, Miracle Mineral Solution or chlorine dioxide solution. Um, and it's, it's literally a bleach. It's not like Clorox. It's a different type of bleach. But it's actually, in the, United, in the United States, it's been FDA approved for over 40 years for human consumption because it's used in water purification systems and it's used in restaurants for disinfecting cutting boards and meat and things like that. But when you dilute it, when you take just a little bit of it and you dilute it in water or juice or something like that and you ingest it, it will convert to massive amounts of oxygen in the body and a little bit of salt and oxygen will kill pathogens in the body, big time. So that is like my silver bullet. I never go anywhere without chlorine dioxide. Uh, if people are interested, they can go to KV Lab. That's Kilo Victor Lab, L-A-B.com, KV Lab.com. And you can buy it there. It's cheap. I think a six month supply is about 25 bucks or something like that. So I keep that on hand always. When I travel, I always have that with me. And the moment I start to feel any kind of a symptom, a sore throat, stuffiness, anything, I immediately start taking that. Bam, usually within a day or two, it's gone before it even gets going. I also use um, monoatomic silver. Uh, people probably have heard of colloidal silver and um, ionic silver and that kind of stuff. And you have to be very careful with silver because um, there is a lot of misunderstanding about it and a lot of um, mislabeling of it. So people will debate about colloidal versus ionic silver and this and that and the other. What you want is silver where the particles of silver, this is silver dissolved in a water solution, and you, you, it's electrically dissolved in water. And you want it, you want to have particles of silver of just a few atoms, like maybe a dozen or fewer atoms per particle. Or even better, you want individual atoms of silver, which are known as monoatomic silver. And that is extremely powerful in healing, and it's a whole other animal. Now, the silver that I use is called accelerated silver. And not only is it monoatomic silver, but it's been energized with scalar energy. So it, it's been programmed with the anti-frequencies of all known radioactive elements. So not only will it kill pathogens in the body, it can also neutralize radioactivity in the body. And so, so that's one of my must-have uh, supplements uh, for any kind of a pathogen. And um, it also helps uh, metabolize minerals in the body better as well. Um, and it tastes like water pretty much. Uh, so chlorine dioxide has a very strong flavor. And if your stomach is really upset, you may not be able to handle that. But the silver you can handle. So if I get really sick, like when I've been hit with bioweapons or energy weapons, uh, I will take the silver at first and then I will start after, once my stomach gets settled, I'll, I'll use the chlorine dioxide. There's a lot of other uh, supplements that I use as well and I travel with. Iodine, a very, very important monoatomic iodine, um, known as nascent iodine. That's very important. Uh, again, we have a skater energized iodine that I sell on my website. And so that one also, along with the benefits of iodine and 100% and bioavailable iodine, it also will neutralize uh, all known radioactive elements uh, help to do that in the body. And then um, the, another major, major thing that I use a lot is quantum biofeedback. Quantum biofeedback is a very sophisticated skater energy technology 
where you have a combination of computer software with a database of millions of different frequencies of different materials and energetics. When you look at the periodic chart, all the elements on the periodic chart um, at an atomic level, they vibrate and each one has a different frequency. So you can measure that. So you can identify, for example, carbon or oxygen or hydrogen or whatever. <clears throat> so these quantum biofeedback machines use that principle to look at the body and identify what elements are there. And it can identify, for example, if you have um, H2O, you know, you've got two hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom, that has an overall resonant frequency that can be identified. So you can identify, you know, you can identify elements, you can identify compounds, you can identify cells, you can identify, identify organs and organ systems. At any level of granularity, you can look at the body and identify what's there or what's not there. So you can identify pathogens, you can identify parasites, you can identify heavy metals, toxins. You can tell if it's a bioweapon, you can tell if it's genetically modified. So those are very, very powerful technologies. Um, they're specifically the devices I use are known as the QXCI SCIO, S-C-I-O, or the Indigo, or the Eductor, there's also the LIFE system, L-I-F-E. And there are others. There are actually portable ones, um, like this little one here. This is known as the Healy. This is a portable quantum biofeedback device where you have these little straps you hook to your wrists. And uh, this thing connects to an app on a cell phone, and the cell phone programs the frequencies into it. And then it will zap you with frequencies. It can do all kinds of things, neutralize uh, pathogens in the body, neutralize toxins, uh, kill off GMO bugs, all kinds of stuff. There are also little portable skater energy machines like this that you can carry in your pocket. They're known as uh, Rife machines, portable Rife machines. They put out different skater frequencies that will do the same kinds of things. So we need, to, we need to understand these technologies, know that they're out there. Some of these technologies, like the quantum biofeedback, typically you go to a practitioner because the machines are very expensive, tens of thousands of dollars, and the tr practitioner has to have years of training. So you can go to a practitioner, but there was, if there's not one in your area, then you can use these little portable devices to get them online. So these are the kinds of things that I teach and, and get into specifics of, uh, you know, in my uh, teachings. Um, so we've got all these amazing technologies and then the ancient stuff, you know, meditation, yoga, uh, tai chi, qigong, you know, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things they can modify, you know, meditation alone can modify matter within the body and heal things, get rid of toxins in the body. Uh, you, you can turn your body into its own EMF protection device. This is the amazing thing about, you know, these ancient technologies. It's like, what if you don't have all these whiz bang things, right? Mm -hmm. Sit down and meditate, do Kriya Yoga, yep. you know, do Tai Chi, Qigong, boom. Mm, awesome. <laughs> and, and I always like to thank nature. You know, if you don't have the devices, you're, <clears throat> you're not there, get nature. And what a great place to meditate in nature. You yes. Know, and nature has to be the foundation of all of this. You know, mm -hmm. none of this stuff is going to work if you're not eating right, living right, getting plenty of sleep, detoxifying the body, drinking pure structured water, you know, living the way that we were designed to live, you know. There's a reason you don't see yogis and masters living on the Florida beaches. They're up in the high Himalayas meditating in caves because these mountains are high in monoatomic elements. The water is very pure. The, the energy is extremely high. It's like living in a pyramid. And, you know, they can purify their bodies and minds. And also when you're inside these caves, you're not getting bombarded by EMF, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a reason that these, these brilliant masters live the way that they live um you know so yeah nature has to be the foundation food has to be the foundation uh it, it's not like oh we're just going to do all these little things and we can you know eat cookies and and <laughs> you, you can have some cookies every now and then, but you know you can't be eating garbage and never detoxing and that kind of stuff you got to do the, the foundational fundamental stuff right absolutely and i think I'm really looking forward for the uh, 30th and 31st because we have you uh, speaking on both days. And I think there's so much amount and uh, it's just an hour as well. Uh, but, but 
it's going to be super amazing so i invite everybody who are watching right now to please bring a friend bring somebody who is not a believer uh, because this is a time for us to bring that awareness spread that awareness in in more than ever you know this is the time yes yeah absolutely and i think on that presentation i'll actually have slides so i can kind of show more details and have links to things that people can go and check out. Now, Ken, can you tell us where we can find your uh, six hour webinar you speak of as well? Because I'd like to go, I personally want to go see what uh, what you're talking about there, because I think there's so much that to, you know, pack it all into, you know, an hour today, <laughs> you know, yes. I, I think it's important because I, I you know, this stuff comes up a lot for me in, in our communities and our networks as well. So if you can let us know what that is again, that would be fantastic. Yes. Um, yeah, I've had a, I, my main website is fresh and alive.com. Um, <clears throat> but because of the decreasing health freedom in the United States, I've had to create a private membership site where people can become members in a private club. And then we have, uh, speech that's protected by the constitution conventional commercial speech isn't constitutionally protected so anyway that website is fresh and alive club and it's five one time five dollar fee for the membership site and and then uh, the webinar uh right now it's 97 dollars. there is a fee for it i originally released it uh for free and and then increased the price because quite honestly, I mean, all of this stuff that's been going on with code, it's affected us and it's put a strain on our business. So I'm having to charge for things that I used to not have to charge for. But if anybody can't afford it, just, you know, contact us and we'll work something out. Great. Well, fantastic. I look forward to hearing more on, on the 31st and... 30th and 31st. Yes, on the 31st. I believe Ken's speaking on the 31st, so is that correct? Uh, I believe both the 30th both and the 31st. Awesome. Yes. yes. Great. Well, I look forward to that. Do you have anything else you want to share before we wrap up, Pari? Well, uh, I just want to say thank you very much, Ken, for taking this time and coming and doing this for us. Um, this is this just this video, what you have shared today is going to be it has so much information. Um, and 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 has so much, you know, the one that we talked about in the beginning, uh, all the awareness, people hardly know about it. Even when I said bioweapons to me here, my husband, he was like, what is bioweapon? Mm -hmm. um, and I want to show this episode to him uh, because he has been not listening to everything that I was saying in the last few days, uh, everything we talked about. So I want to show this and I want him to start from here. So uh, this is such a great um in interview uh, and thank you thank you very much for doing this and coming and accepting to come over for the event and um, and coming in as a speaker so thank you oh, it's always my pleasure and yeah, just have your husband watch my webinar that'll maybe that'll yeah. wake him up a little bit because yeah. i show the scientific proof of this stuff and i'm not just reading conspiracy theories on the internet yeah and and thank you candidate you what what you shared today really is, as I said before, I even went live, you, you just kind of validated and put me in a place where it's like, ah, oh, perfect, I'm in the right place. So yeah, I thank and, you for you know, that. And I, I, yeah, I would say as a you know, parting um, shot to the people, you know, don't get afraid and fear about whatever is going on. 2021 is going to be a very eventful year, and there's going to be a lot of stuff that can be potentially frightening to people. Um, I mean, heck, look at what's going on right now in the United States, you know. Uh, and COVID and everything else. And now there's a new COVID strain. Uh, if you simply, you know, meditate and keep your awareness up, be open-minded, stay out of fear, you will find what you need to find to take care of yourself and you'll be just fine. Um, the, we're actually in a good situation on earth. We're migrating toward a much better reality on Earth, but we have to dismantle the old structures before we create the new ones. So that's what's going on right now. The old paradigms are changing. And by the way, the more that you try to hang on to the old paradigm, uh, the more difficulty you're going to have. So be progressive, look to the future, keep an open mind, meditate, stay out of fear, and you'll be just fine. Great. Thank you. Great. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ken, and thank you, Mark, for joining and doing this, um, this great uh, series for the event. I'm so grateful for that. 
It's always a pleasure, Pari. Happy to support in any way I can, and it's a pleasure meeting you, Ken. I look forward to getting to know you and your work even better as we go forward on this mission to make a better everyday world for all humanity. Likewise, Mark. Great pleasure. Great. Thank well, until you. next time, everyone. Yes. We'll see you on the 30th and 31st of January at the Spiritual Science International Meet.